Hi everyone, and welcome to the overview of our newest plugin called Energy Panner. Energy Panner is a plugin that automatically pans a sound according to its intensity. This is the plugin. Here we have a sound to the left. It's its original point. And as the intensity of the sound increases, the sound will move from left to right. As the intensity decreases, the sound will go from right to left. Let's hear it. And this is the basic mode of operation of the energy panner. The default mode is the pan, but we have a second mode which is called sliding. The main difference between the two modes is that the pan only acts between the initial and the final positions of the plugin. And when the intensity decreases, the sound goes back to the initial point. Whereas in the sliding mode, the sound can go beyond the initial and final points. And when the intensity decreases, the sound stays where it is. It doesn't go back to its original source. And now it's time to take a look at the controls of the plugin. Let us start with the threshold. The threshold is the parameter where you can control when the plugin acts on the sound. If the sound reaches the threshold, then the plugin will start panning that sound. If the intensity of the sound doesn't reach the threshold, then the plugin will do nothing. Then we have the ratio, which is basically where we can set how much panning or how harsh the panning will be when the threshold value is surpassed by the input sound. Next, we have the attack and release parameters. Basically, whenever the intensity of sound changes or there's a new sound coming in as input, we can set how fast the plugin will act through the attack and how fast it will stop acting through the release. By default, both the attack and release are linked, but we can move them independently if we untoggle the link button that's between the two parameters. We can also hear how this sounds in the sliding mode. Now let us talk about the movement. By default, our sound will start at the point and it will finish at a point. We can change the position of the initial and the destination points. We can, for instance, place them in the midway from the left and the right, or we can even make them very close to the center. We can also change the position of the points through this drop down menu here to the left, for instance, then to the right and then to the center. This way you can easily place the points in exact positions. Of course, you can do this manually and drag the points to whatever you want. And if you do this while pressing the Shift or Alt key, you will have a much smoother movement. 
if you do this by clicking control, you will snap the points to the grid. Instead of using just points, we can also use the speakers. So we can have our sound starting from the speakers, in this case left and right, and go towards the point. This way, instead of having the sound starting from a point to the left and go towards the right, as we had before, now we will have the sounds both from the left and the right side going towards the point which is in the center in this case. We can change the position of the point. So for instance, we can place it here to the right, to the left as well. The plugin also provides clockwise and counterclockwise movements. These movements starting from the point or starting from the speaker. Another thing we can do is to change the direction in which the sounds are moving by clicking this button right here. So as you can see, we change from clockwise to counterclockwise by clicking this. Or if we are starting from the speakers to the point, we can also revert that situation. If the movement is being performed between the two points, by clicking the revert button, we are actually changing the direction in which the sounds are moving. In this case, we can change from left to right to right to left. The plugin also provides a randomize button and each time you click this button, the plugin will generate new values for its parameters and you will get a completely different result every time. In order to show you how the sidechain works in the energy banner, I've added an extra file, which is basically a flamethrower looped, and this will be our sidechain signal. Up until now, it has been the canary file that we've been listening to that has been controlling the plugin. So it has been the intensity of this waveform that has been establishing how the plugin will behave. But now, since we've activated the sidechain option we can use the flamethrower file to control the way the plugin will act on top of the original file so we have these peaks over here and these will dictate how the plugin will act on the canary sounds Regarding outputs, the Energy Panner offers many different solutions and it depends on the type of track. So in this case, we're working with a stereo track. So we have general DAW type stereo with a little bit of attenuation at the back. Then we also have XY, MS and Bloomline setups. These basically simulate the polar patterns of such setups and we also use binaural audio 
For instance, if this was a 5.1 track, we will have the 5.1 and binaural options and the plugin, again, depending on the type of track, offers 7.1, Dolby Atmos, Ambisonics outputs. Up until now, we have been working with audio files, but the energy panner also works with MIDI. So I'll open a session with a MIDI track and I'll play some notes on a synthesizer and let's hear how these different examples sound. the sliding mode just to check how it sounds. And this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Feel free to give us any feedback in the comments below. Send us an email if you prefer. The links to our website and other social media platforms are in the description of this video. Please feel free to follow us. And as always, it's a pleasure being here with you showing our products to you, the artists. Thank you.